Man, it can be frustrating when you drop out on a paraglider and all your mates are flying around. So in this video, I'll share the secrets of staying up. the size of your paraglider does matter. Let's get this out of the way right at the beginning. If you're on a big wing, in other words, compared to your body size, it's a large area of wing. It'll mean that your wing loading is low. Per square meter of wing, you've got less kilograms being supported by the wing area. That will make quite a big difference in your sink rate, just the raw sink rate through the air. So if you're on a glider where you're over the weight range, and especially if you're a large pilot, you'll find that the wing loading is pretty high just by the manufacturer's recommendation. So if you're on a ridge with a whole lot of other pilots of mixed sizes, you'll probably find that you're going to be dropping out first because although you're big and you've got more performance in glide and speed, if you're just looking at sink rate, you might be a little bit higher because you're right at the top of your weight range in the glider. So that's one thing to consider that if you're consistently dropping out, you might be overweight or pushing the limit on your wing. It might be the time to upgrade to larger size and also as you go up in classes in gliders you find you get a squeak more performance in the higher classes so if you're comparing yourself against competition pilots and you're on a basic glider you might not be making a fair comparison don't be too hard on yourself but once we've got that size out of the way everything else is to do with where you put yourself on the wing and that makes a big difference Turn in lift, fly straight in sink. This is a big one. On the ridge, if you fly into lift, you need to turn at that point. There are two reasons. One is when you turn your glider in sink, you're banking the wing over, you're increasing the sink rate, and if you're already in sinking air, you lose more height. And sometimes that few meters on the ridge can make a critical difference as to how much lift you're getting off the ridge lift. So try and keep your turns in lift. The other thing that happens is that a turn in sink is often very wide. It's hard to get good contact with the wing. So the sinking air does mess up the airflow of your wing temporarily as you go into the sink. And if you try to turn, you get this grinding wide turn. Whereas when you're in the lift, as you go into the lift and you hit that little strike of lift, you can get a really sweet tight turn. So again, turning in lift will help you stay in the lift through the whole turn. And it will give you that extra few meters on each pass on the ridge that will make the difference cumulatively to you staying up instead of dropping out. Turn tight, then widen out. Too often I see pilots flying along, getting some lift, not too sure which way to go, doing a gentle turn and then falling out the other side of the lift. And then you try and come around and find the lift again. And it's by the time you've come around in a full circle, you just can't find it. So just to simplify that for you, if you're in lift turn, you're at least staying in that patch of lift. You can always widen your turn out and optimize the turn and get more efficient and get better at it. But in the beginning, man, you just want to hold on to that lift. So don't worry, turn and then widen out. Number four, ride the dividing lines in the terrain. So on the ridge, you'll find if you've got a, a hill, you'll have a separation in point in front. You'll have a spine running down, maybe and the wind's coming onto that spine. That's a dividing line that you can ride. That's where you're gonna find most of the thermals triggering off. And when you go out over the terrain, anywhere where you've got a dividing line between a dark field and a light field, a dark field and a forest field and a town, you've got a dividing line there. and that is usually where you're going to find the lift. It'll be thermals triggering off that line. And also in the terrain, if you're looking out over the landscape, wherever you see raised ground, that's a dividing line. And that's usually going to drain better and be drier. So the ground will heat up more and that's where the thermals are going to release. So look for those dividing lines and follow them. Number five, watch the clouds. There are two types of clouds to pay attention to. The one is obviously the cumulus clouds, which will show you where the top of the lifting air currents are. So always keep an eye out for forming clouds. Those are the ones you want to go for, not the old established cumulus cloud that's likely to have sinking air around it, but the one that's just starting to build. The other one to keep a close eye on is the scrim of cirrus cloud that comes over the top. Often pilots don't notice that when you're flying around and you've 
kind of got used to thermal, 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 uh, and you drop out. And that scrum has come across the sky. It makes a big difference as it approaches and comes over because it will depress the amount of heating that's happening and the thermal cycle will be interrupted. So suddenly there'll be a gap where you were used to things releasing and in that gap you're sinking. So pay close attention when that comes in, pop up and slow down and stay near really good triggers rather than going exploring at that moment. Right, I hope you enjoyed those tips. I hope you stay up. If you want to learn more, I continue this series on my website, flywithgreg.com. Join my academy and I'll take your flying to the next level. There's also a whole series on thermal flying that you might be interested in. Thanks so much for watching. Follow this channel so you get notified of the next video and pop over to my website and take the free trial to see what this whole flight academy thing's about.